Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of Robotics 101. In previous videos we've talked about motors, we've talked about angular motion, linear motion, gears, pulleys, and all the other stuff that you need to make robotics. In this video we're going to talk about mechanical structure. We're going to give a brief overview of some of the different materials that you might encounter when building a robot and some of the pros and cons of each. <laughs> Wood is a very common and popular material for building robotics. It's relatively inexpensive, relatively strong, and very easy to get, and very easy to work with as well. You can get stuff like this at pretty much any hardware store, and it comes pre-cut, and it's, you know, pretty cheap. One of the downsides to wood, though, is it doesn't really hold any dimensional shape very accurately. Moisture, humidity, things like that can actually cause it to bend and bow and change in shape. You're not really going to want to use wood for anything that requires precise alignment. One of the other downsides to wood is the only way you can really fasten this together is with a glue, nails, or screws. And the screws and nails can actually kind of work loose over time. When gluing, you're going to be left with a semi-permanent structure that you can't really easily take apart and put back together again. Of course, wood is a very broad term. There's a lot of different types of wood. Here I've got a poplar, which is a very lightweight and um, also not very hard wood. You can actually press your fingernail into it and make a dent. This is relatively inexpensive though, and it's still pretty strong and very easy to cut and drill. And then if you move up to something like a pine, a pine is um, commonly found in you know moldings and stuff like that inside a house. This is a little bit harder and still pretty easy to work with. Um, just gives you a little bit more strength. And then, you know, we've got something here which is actually a red oak. A red oak is um, a very hard wood and a lot more difficult to machine. Still pretty easy, um, but drilling holes, cutting is going to be a little bit more difficult, but it's also a lot heavier as well. In addition to all the different types of um, hardwoods and softwoods, there's actually a lot of um, synthetic particle board type things. There's uh, particle boards, there's fiber boards. There's a huge amount of these that you can find at the hardware store. I suggest just going to a Home Depot or Lowe's and just kind of perusing the aisles and looking at all the different things out there. You can get them in large sheets, you can get them in small sheets. Um, this is actually a piece from a shelf. This is um, just covered in melamine. This is really nice because it gives you this nice waterproof surface. One of the main differences between a particle board or an MDF as opposed to a real wood like these is wood actually has grain. So when you saw into it or cut into it, it can actually follow the grain. Whereas with a particle board or an MDF, there is no real grain. It is actually particles of wood that are held together with a binder. So when you cut, drill, or machine it, it leaves you with a much smoother and consistent finish. Metal comes in, of course, numerous different alloys. You've got stainless steel, you've got aluminum, you've got brass, you've got copper. Primarily, we're going to be looking at aluminum because it's um, the most common and the most easy to use. This is just a nice aluminum extrusion that you can find pretty much at any hardware store. Next time you go to a hardware store, just look around the um, hardware section and you can find a big box of aluminum usually that has all these different kind of profiles in it. This is a very rigid and very lightweight piece of 6061 aluminum that drills very easily, can cut with a hand hacksaw, and um, can make a very rigid frame. The other nice thing about metal is you can find it in numerous different configurations. This is an um, angle piece of aluminum um, that can be used actually to join two plates like that. Um, these are also hollow tubes that you can find readily, so you can run things through them and form really rigid structures with these as well. The other nice thing about metal is the ease of machinability. With metal and the proper tools, you can get very precise cuts and very precise parts out of metal. Whereas something like wood, you can use basic hand tools to cut it and to carve it and to shape it, but your precision is never really going to be there. When connecting wood pieces together, you're pretty limited to screws, nails, or adhesives like a wood glue. With metal, you have a few more options. You can weld metal pieces together. You can also tap it to create threads to use machine screws to fasten everything together tightly. The nice thing about connecting metal pieces together is you have repeatability and accuracy, and if you use screws, you can actually be able to take things apart and put them back together. When choosing the right metal for your project, there's a couple things to take into consideration. Aluminum does machine very well, but it's a lot more difficult to weld and keep it precise. Steel is a lot easier to weld, but it doesn't machine quite as nicely as aluminum. Steel also oxidizes and can rust, whereas aluminum is not prone to oxidization. 
There are of course many other metals out there. Titanium is great because it's lightweight, it's also extremely hard, and there's also metals like brass that work really well for bearings and bushings and other things where you actually want a little bit of ductibility. <laughs> Plastic is another material that you might encounter when building a robot. The term plastic is pretty nebulous, and there's just as many types of plastics as there are wood and metals. Generally, what we're gonna see is something like an acrylic or plexiglass or even a Lexan. They typically come in these thin sheets. It's gonna be less likely that you're gonna be able to find a larger block of plastic like this. You can find places online to order it from, but it's gonna be a lot more expensive. The workability of plastic lies somewhere between wood and metal. You can use basic hand tools to cut it, but it also does machine pretty well. However, it is brittle, so unlike metal that you can tap and have threads, plastic doesn't really accept threads because it's just too brittle. However, you can use holes to affix it to other materials. And because plastic comes in these nice thin sheets, it makes it an ideal candidate for laser cutting. PVC is another great building material. It's very strong, relatively lightweight for its strength, and it's very easily found at hardware stores. You can get sections like this for just a couple bucks, and if you peruse your hardware store, you can find all the T's, elbows, and junctions that you need. The downside to PVC is it's relatively permanent. Once you glue on a connector and put your structure together, it's not as easy to take apart. Well, it's kind of impossible to take apart unless you just cut it all up. PVC also machines relatively well. You can um, cut it easily with hand tools, drill holes, and do pretty much all the things that you can do with a wood or any of the thin plastics as well. For all these different materials, I encourage you to check out your local hardware store or stores and see what they have. You might find that there's a lot of these materials that you didn't know exist that are readily available and relatively inexpensive. I also encourage you to look up local aluminum recycling and scrap metal. You might find that it's relatively inexpensive to find nice extrusions of aluminum. <laughs> All the materials that we talked about previously, metal, wood, and plastic, they're all really good when you're creating something for scratch. But other than PVC, they're not really that good for rapid prototyping. So there's a lot of companies out there and a lot of different options for rapid prototyping. One of the most popular is actually 8020. 8020 is an aluminum extrusion, and um, this is just an example of one of their extrusions. They have many different sizes, many different shapes. They have these channels that you can slide a nut inside, attach something to it, screw it down, and form a very basic structure. Even though they have these extrusions in a lot of different configurations, you're still limited to what extrusions they have. Whereas if you're machining something directly from metal or making something out of wood, you can do pretty much whatever you want. But with 8020, you are limited to you know, the exact profile that they give you. And also, because there are no holes, it is a solid structure, you're still gonna have to do some drilling if you want shafts to run through it. One of the other downsides to 8020 is it is relatively large for small-scale robotics. So a couple companies made Micro Racks and Maker Beam. We used to carry this for a little while, and these are essentially very small versions of the 8020. So these are very similar in that they have a channel down the middle, you put a nut inside, bolt it down, and these can make very nice rapid prototyping. A downside to Micro Racks and Maker Beam is they really don't have that many attachments, um, things like linear bearings, linear slides, motor mounts, couplers, things like that. 8020 does have a pretty large catalog of those pieces, but Micro Racks and Maker Beam are relatively new to the scene and they just don't have as many additional pieces for them. And lastly, we have Actobotics. This is one of the 24-inch Actobotics channels, and you can see it's a similar size to the 8020. It's not as solid and rigid as a solid beam of 8020, however, it has a lot more attachment points. Actobotics makes a really good prototyping platform because unlike the slides that you have on 8020, Micro Racks, and Maker Beam, it's really easy to add new components onto this beam because you have so many different attachment points and you also have through holes that you can do shafts and uh, motors and couplers and other things. It makes it a lot easier to quickly prototype something. This is an example of a simple robot that we put together relatively quickly with Actobotics. As you can see, we've got a couple of the Actobotics channels here, and on the front we have a servo that is controlling the front steering with a motor on the wheel. This is just an example of something that can be quickly put together with a rapid prototyping material such as Actobotics or Maker Beam or Micro Racks or 8020 versus going to the machine shop and actually building all the parts from scratch.